Hey, what's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Off-Road. Today, I'm gonna do another campfire rant or campfire talk. We're gonna try to make these series regular. They're gonna be coming out on Thursdays, so if you wanna check in, hit that notification bell, and hopefully we'll bring some value as we talk about different subjects. Today, I wanna talk a little bit about a certain topic that a lot of people make comments online about, and I just don't think they understand behind the scenes of how, how a lot of the details would work out in order to get what they ask for online a lot. Here at ROA Off-Road, like, we've been in business for going on 15 years. More like eight years ago, we started talking about doing off-road trailers because we kind of like fell in love with the earth roamers and we thought we should build trailers. The more and more we dug into it, it just became manufacturing is much different than selling and operating a sales center. We don't like to call our facility a dealership. It's, it technically is, but it's an experience center because we sell things that nobody needs. So to us, we believe it needs to be an experience. Moving through the process to get to where we are today, we now carry some of the coolest, most unique, and arguably the best off-road campers in America. I wanna say that's actually not that, you can't argue that too much. They are the best campers in America. You might be able to argue whether they're the best in the world. Now, we started out with sourcing stuff from overseas. One of the very first brands we carried was a company called Black Series. They were an Australian design. Originally, they started out of Australia. A Chinese man bought that company and he moved production over to China and he started building them and delivering them into the United States. And we were one of the first people to essentially find them. Uh, we first actually, when we just started down the path of you know, off-road trailers and off-road RVs, once we decided we didn't wanna build, but we wanted to just sell, because that's, that's what we're really good at. We're very good at, at ROA, we love the experience, right? We love to create a unique experience, a delivery experience, an owner, an owner experience. We have an owner's groups, right? We call them roamers and they, we do rallies and adventures. And, and so I wasn't really like excited about manufacturing. And I said, let's just find some of the best campers, some of the best off-road trailers and bring them into the US and let's deliver them and give people a phenomenal experience. Focus on what we're good at and let the people who are already making trailers let them focus on what they're good at. And so we actually, the one of the very first people we reached out to was Patriot Campers. And at that time, they didn't want to sign a dealer in the US. This was years ago. We now carry Patriot, which I'm proud of. I'm really happy about that. But originally we reached out to them and they just were like, not, it, it wasn't the right timing, right? We were, too, we were too early. And that seems to be kind of the case, our story here at ROA. We are very innovative. We're always pushing the envelope in the industry. And we seem to be early all the time, right? We're always upgrading the stuff. We get our stuff and then we upgrade them because we're always just trying to be innovative and put the best of the best in everything that we do. Anyway, long story story somewhat short we started reaching out to all these manufacturers trying to like start something with people over in Australia and we we so happened to sync up with this this company called Black Series and you know they weren't actually made in Australia they were made in China and they were shipping them to the US and we actually put our hands on them and immediately I was like wow these trailers are amazing at first the, the we don't carry them anymore just because of some quality issues and just honestly, we're always in the search for the best of the best. And we just moved on to what I believe is much better stuff in the market right now. But when we did put our hands on these originally, we, we found that there was more similarities to these and million dollar motor coaches in America than there were any other trailer in America. Like there, there was nothing that could really compare. Like, and we sold trailers, we sold fifth wheels, we sold, travel trailers, you know, every, every manufacturer and every brand we pretty much have sold because we used to do more used than anything. So we'd go to the auctions and get them. And so I'm really familiar with most of the brands made in America. And when we saw it, we're like, man, this doesn't compare to anything that we see, like no Jayco's or Thor's. Like we just didn't, like they didn't compare. They were much, much better quality 
at that time, right? We, we signed up with them and started selling them. Of course, we found out there were so many issues and ish problems, and that's why we started doing modifications and retrofitting. We started changing out the electrical systems, the plumbing systems. We started changing out like everything on the trailer. At one point, we were almost, I mean, we would buy a trailer for, you know, 50 to 60 grand, and we would dump 50 grand into it to make it up to our standards, right? And so we were pushing 100, 110 grand on some of the trailers we would sell. And we started, you know, saying we should reach out to other manufacturers in Australia and see if we can get some of them to come over to the US. And now this is the comment that everybody makes. When are you gonna go start carrying Bruder? Uh, why don't you guys carry Zone RV? Or why don't you guys get Kedrins? Or why don't you get, what's another brand? Lotus, right? There's so many cool Australian manufacturers out there. Or Crawler, that's a company from Europe and Turkey, right? I want you to know, and you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to share too much information, but we have reached out to almost every single one of those manufacturers and talked to them. Like we have actually gone down that rabbit hole and have talked with them seriously about carrying their products in America. The, the things that people don't understand or don't see is it's a, a Herculean process or it would be a Herculean achievement to actually get some of these campers out here. Number one is everything is mirrored, right? So they drive on the opposite side of the road, which means the doors are on the opposite side. The, the components, things from the ACs to the furnaces to their you know, electrical components are all 240. Here in America, we run 120. That's different wiring. It's different copper. I, I'm not, I'm not a, an electrician, but I understand that a lot of these things have to be completely changed over. And some of the wiring that we use in America, you can't even buy overseas. So it would be a matter of us buying the wire here in a Home Depot and shipping it to Australia to have them install the wiring over there than to ship it over here. And, and it just, it becomes kind of, quite frankly, ridiculous to do, right? There are certain things that have to be purchased here and shipped there to ship here. What, like, why would we do that? The other thing is the mirroring. It, it's, it's way harder to actually mirror uh, stuff than you, you would think, oh, this is really easy, but it's not. Like some of the issues we've dealt with is like Zone, for example, does a lot of molds, right? They do a fiberglass mold and a mold can cost tens of thousands, a hundred thousand dollars, right? For a very high quality mold. And if it's already molded to the opposite side of the, you know, they're driving on the opposite side, everything's molded in one direction, you would have to completely create new molds to mold it in the other direction, right? And that could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You would have to retool your molds, you would have to get different components, and it's like, okay, what, what is it gonna take to do this? I wish it was hundreds of hundred thousand dollars or two or three or four. A lot of times it's gonna be millions of dollars to actually really do this and do it the right way. Yeah, you can send out a trailer and it can be left hand, you know, drive, but that's not really good for us. I guess you could send us a trailer that you could never plug in because all the electrical components would get fried. You can send over a box without components. Now we are, we are working with Kimberly and they've actually done a lot of these things, but it's, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, and, and the lead time to get one is really, really long. And it's, it's amazing that there's some progress happening there, but everybody's like, why don't you do, you do, you know, Lotus or Zone or Bruder? And it's just like, listen, we actually have gone down this, uh, down this path and we have talked with them on multiple occasions. And, and at the end of the day, some of those trailers look amazing quite frankly. Now I will, I will, I will have to say, and I don't want to say anything bad about them, but the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> Everybody kind of has this perception of like, oh my goodness, like that trailer is so much better than anything else in America. And it's like, listen, we're part of manufacturing. We sell campers and we work on campers. We tear them apart. The more and more we get into them and get into the guts, and we have seen some of these campers in person in America, we've put our hands on some of these things. You'd be surprised that the, 
I think people have the perception that they're a lot better than they really are. The new products that are coming to America, like made in America, like the Explore or the Pause by Palomino, those trailers are not second class compared to some of the stuff that we have seen in Australia. And that's something that I think people need to actually understand. America in the last couple of years has actually stepped up their game like tremendously to the point that I would argue in a lot of areas, our trailers are actually better than their trailers. And that's coming from somebody that's actually been to <laughs> a lot of manufacturers and been able to see the insides, the guts of these trailers and just understanding how they function and everything. So some of these trailers, yeah, we can go and get one. We can ship it to the US and you're gonna spend, you know how much it costs to ship a trailer here? At least five grand for a small little trailer that weighs a couple thousand pounds. You wanna, you're talking a four or 5,000 pound trailer. You're, you're paying 10, 15, $20,000 the lead time to get it to come here. And you're just sitting here thinking like, wait, for that much more money, is it really worth it? Or can we find somebody in America to build these trailers? The answer is yes. And we have, we actually have found people to build trailers just as good, if not better than a lot of Australian trailers here in America. And they're called Paws and Imperial Outdoors, High Altitude in Colorado, you know, are they, are, is everything dialed in perfectly? At this stage, they're pretty dang close. Could there be some improvements on things? Of course there could be improvements. That's, that's like, that's innovation, right? <laughs> that like everything can be improved and, and made better. But like, I think that this talk, the talk of we need to get something from Australia, I believe that talk is, is close to a thing in the past. And if you don't actually, if you haven't actually put your hands on some of the new products here and seen them in person. Now I have seen some of the stuff in Australia in person and I've seen the stuff here in person, right? So you're coming, I'm talking to you from somebody that's actually been hands-on with both of these products. And I'm telling you right now, we can be proud Americans right now because we now have some stuff built in America that actually are able to compete with the best of the best in the world. And I'm pretty excited about that. And I just like, I just, I just think people that have this perception that they still need to go and get something overseas is, I, it's just not true anymore. Uh, like, yes, the trailers overseas still are pretty cool, but I'll tell you what, one of the biggest and most inherent flaws in almost all Australian trailers and African trailers and, and European trailers, uh, European trailers are better, um, but is, is insulation. Like they're not designed for cold, cold weather. Maybe you don't need a camp in cold weather. And if that's the case, then you're fine. But the logistics of getting them here, it, it really doesn't make sense. And as we pursued uh, talking with and trying to get these manufacturers to come out here and work with them, the obstacles when it came to money to actually get it done was very, very high. And at the end of the day, I just thought America can do better. I, I believe America should do better. Like we are a manufacturing country, right? We, we actually are like, I know China's starting to win, but like we are one of the biggest manufacturing company, countries in the world. And we can make great products and we do make great products. Unfortunately, in the trailer industry, we haven't done that for years, but that's changing. And I'm excited because I feel like we're part of that change. We were the first ones to get some of those manufacturers into the US and we blew up the marketing in the entire country so people were more aware of these products. And I don't think if it wasn't for us bringing these things to market, I don't believe they would have actually made it into the US. And a lot of people were waiting to see if they would. And we really laid on the marketing and w was able to blow up the, the Australian off-road trailers. And now we're seeing everybody in the market in the US stepping into this, this, this industry. And it's exciting. I, I think it's exciting because I believe the more people that get into it, the more options we have, the more competitive it will get. Right now it's expensive. And a lot of people say, oh, just because it's overland, it's expensive. That's not true. Like it's expensive because the things in them are more expensive. Like when you're putting better components 
that cost two or three or four times as much when you're putting in uh, materials that cost, I mean, some of the materials in like the Explore and the Paws, some of the materials they're using is 10 times more expensive than what you would put in a standard trailer. 10 times more expensive. The trailers are not 10 times more expensive, but the materials can be, right? So the, the quality is getting there, but also as the more and more people get into it, the more and more we'll be able to, hopefully, it's this idea of the more you can build and the more you can get into the market, the potential you have to be able to get the prices down lower and hopefully it will raise the standard across the whole board. Of course, like if you pay $20,000 for a trailer, you're, you're gonna get a, the value of a $20,000 trailer. Hopefully, with some innovations and ingenuity, the components for the expensive trailers can come down in cost and the cheaper trailers can start putting those things in them. Like one of the things that I would love to see happen over the next decade is solid axles and leaf springs disappear. Like I think, or I mean, on a toy hauler, that's hard because of the weight. But for the most part, every travel trailer should have independent suspension. And I actually believe that's actually going to happen because now more ride is doing it. Now Kurt is doing it. And that's an example of, you know, more people getting into the industry is going to raise the bar for all of the campers in America. And if it's because the independent suspension, the ride, that smooth ride down the road is going to allow even a $20,000, whatever, Jayco, J flight, whatever you got, if you put an independent suspension on that, that's going to increase the longevity of the trailer's life just because it's not getting rattled as much to death. Like there's certain things you can do to make them last longer. And that's one of the things that I'm really excited about. But this is kind of like an insider on the Australian versus American industry. And I believe everybody here should be proud to be an American right now more than ever before when it comes to the off-road trailer industry, right? As I'm sitting in front of a, this is hilarious. I'm sitting in front of a, a uh, Conqueror, which is originally an African company, which is hilarious. I should have been doing this in front of the Explorer, the pause, but listen, I just wanted to get this out and share this with you. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please make them below. Please don't be rude and a troll. Nobody likes a troll, <laughs> but Thanks so much and have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.